So we're here today to talk about the pilot courses. You're very, very brave souls. We're so thrilled to have you here uh, uh, working with us on the pilots for the Bright Space courses. So I just, I just want to really thank you all for agreeing to participate in this. We're pretty excited to reach this point. It's been a lot of work, but I, I think we're really um, ready to start um, you know, putting the, the platform in, showing it off and getting it working for us. So we're excited about the next sem upcoming semester. Um, what we're going to cover today is uh, just introducing who you'll be working with. Let's explain a little bit of detail how the process will work, what you can expect, roughly the timelines and the training options. And then we'll try and we'll make, leave some space for Q&A and questions. At the moment, I'm not seeing the chat, so I'm going to rely on my colleagues to stop me if there's anything you needed to ask. Um, um, but, but I just wanted to introduce who we are for now. And I'm hoping that you'll also introduce yourselves in the chat as we go along. So, you know, I'm Janet Small, as I said, from um, SILT. And with, with Sam and my colleague, Kath Robb, we are the sort of course migration coordination team that's trying to make sure all the courses are uh, lined up for migration and that the process is, is as smooth as it can be. So if they're here, I'm not sure if um, Kath and Sam, if they're in the room, could just put this, their cameras and, and wave. But otherwise, you'll probably meet them at various points in our process. And um, we also have uh, people working on the training side, which is the other area we were talking about in detail today. And we've got Tabisa, who I know is here. There's Kath putting her camera on, great. And I know Tabisa's already said hello. And um, Nadine, my colleague, won't be here today, but I'm not sure she's in the room, but she's also involved in the training coordination. And I think you all know Shanali Govinder, who's been helping with preparation, but is now on sabbatical for a few months. So you may not see her, but she's has had a hand in helping with the training preparation. So I'm going to ask um, those um, other uh, colleagues to, to respond to the chat while I just go through the rest of these slides. So I think by now, most of you would should have received an email introducing you to one of the SILT learning designers. And uh, here there is a is pictures and list of them all those of people who are from the learning design team I know, for instance, Thomas is here. I'm not sure who else is in the room, but if they'd also put their cameras on and just wave one of these um, souls will be allocated to, to work with you on your migration and you should have received an email so please just um, Thomas put your camera on if you can and say hello there's Lauren great um, or otherwise sorry Thomas, my laptop said. said in okay in okay I'm here, sorry hi, Thomas okay the, the hi Mark yeah so you'll meet these um, people depending on who's been assigned to your courses but this is our team who are learning designers who've been trained themselves and have been looking in a lot of detail at the platform so yeah and then we also have a team of eight tech advisors, which who are senior students who have been uh, particularly trained to look at uh, accessibility and universal design for learning, and they'll also be helping us with the migration. So um, I just wanted you to know that there's a, a group of uh, senior trained students who will be also working on some of the courses. Okay. So here we are, and I wanted to just explain briefly what the process of migration is going to look like. And then I'm going to hand over to Lauren, one of the learning design, senior learning designers, to, to discuss in some detail how it will actually happen. You might have seen this slide already. We're trying to use it to, to communicate the basic approach, which is which what happens is like three main sort of stages. The first is we have to get the your course off the Vula, off Vula if you, unless you're creating something new. I think there are one or two people creating a course from scratch, but the majority of the pilot courses are migrating from a Vula course site to um, Brightspace and that there's an auto conversion that happens. And in most cases already has happened for the pilots that the, the your courses. Um, that, and then thereafter, that gets that gets into what we're calling a reference site or a temporary site that is a copy of your Vula course. And from there, that would transfer into onto your new course site that you will use for teaching. And this is the part where there will be work to be done uh, with the with the learning designer to decide if you want to do any re revisions or restructuring or review and also obviously very importantly review how the transfer has worked. So here's the place where there'd be your time 
and an opportunity to work with the learning designer about how to change things. And then you would um, review that and uh, obviously get it ready for teaching. So this all has to happen between now and in the 25th of um, uh, July when teaching begins. So I'm going to hand over, unless there's a particular question for now that we should, should I stop there and see if anybody has any questions, but I'm going to ask Lauren to talk through exactly how it will work. Lauren? Hi, Janet. Yes. Sorry, ma'am. Um, just a question. If you were not in Vula previously, is there an option, is there a way also where we can put a new, a new program on? Yes, it's it's actually quite as much simpler to create a course from scratch because you don't have okay. to worry about how things transfer across. So that's definitely a possibility. And there are courses, are there one or two we know that are in the pilot group who are creating courses from scratch. Uh, okay. I think someone's raised their hand. Is that Bruce? Yeah, it's me. Hi. Hi. Um, I've got a, a full year course, which we which is running in Vula now. Uh, should mm -hmm. I, and that's the one I've put up for, um, you know, as, as the Brightspace option, sh sh would it be fine, do you think, to transition from Vula to Brightspace, even though it's a full year course? A full year course, yeah. Well, I guess it would mean, Bruce, that's an interesting question. You would, you would obviously transfer the whole course, but you might prioritize working on the second semester part, I would suggest now. And then yeah. you could work, you know, once you've got that, this, the material that you're going to be needed to teach in the second semester, you can spend the second semester preparing the first semester material, which will then mean your course is ready for all the students by the time you're teaching it in 2023. Does that make sense? Uh, so I wouldn't, you, you wouldn't recommend that I would, I would teach the second half of the courses, uh, from July on. Is that, is that? Yeah, cool? yeah, no, I was saying you can, I think you can, okay. um, depending on how, unless you, unless your material sort of integrated back into some of the early material, unless you sort of doing referencing back some of the material on the Vula site, but if your second semester is like a standalone part, then you could yeah. teach it on Brightspace. Yeah, and okay. you could then prepare your material that's ready for the first semester so that when you oh, offer the whole course again oh, yeah. in 2023, that's all ready, if you know what I mean. So kind okay. of uh, work on it in reverse, work on the second part first. So I think the yeah. only issue maybe to talk to the early designer about is if there's anything that's going to mean students would have to go back to the Vula material or how much that might be a factor would be my only consideration. But I think there are quite a few people whose courses are the whole year course right. uh, structure. It just depends on if the material in the second semester is like standalone, then I don't think it's a problem. But I don't know if anybody else wants to comment on that. Any other questions? I think somebody else have a hand up or has a comment on that. Um, yes, uh, my name is Ziki. Um, hi, so, hi, hi. Um, I had um, uh, included our course administrator uh, as somebody who should be joining these sessions, but I see he's not invited. So what I wanted to know is um, if this training will be the same as the one um, that we will attend with Greg, um, there's an, I think it's an eight hour training that we have to participate in. Yeah. And Siki, we'll talk, we've got a whole session just now on the training, so we can clarify that, but I, I think you're, I'm pretty sure your administrator will be added to that list for the training. So okay. this is really like right. an information session. We could, sorry that they weren't invited your administrator, they could have been. This is more like how it's going to work rather than actual training. Right. Okay. Thank okay. Thank so, Thank so I don't know, Lauren, should we go ahead with your section? I'm not seeing what else is in the chat at the moment. <clears throat> and I think Tabby says handling the chat. Okay, um, so nicely, so we can continue. Great. Okay, I'm going to run the slides for you, all right? Yes, please. Um, okay, hi everyone. As Janet said, my name is Lauren. I'm a, a learning designer and project coordinator here at SILT. And um, I will be working with some of you on your courses as we migrate into Prime Space. Um, I'm going to talk a bit more into more detail. Um, after that diagram or the, the flowchart that Janet had up previously. So the first thing that happens um, is that your course will be auto-migrated um, from Vula to Pride Space. And this is a, an automatic process that happens over a couple of hours. Um, and then it will create a, a, a site on Pride Space that will have a name similar to 
numbers on the screen. It will say Villa site and your course name and your course code. And this site will be used for reference only. It, it, we won't be making any changes to that site. Um, we will be using this to, to check, um, to, to have, as I said, to, to have it as a, a reference site. Um, and so it will check the migration on this site against your original villa site to see if um, how if the migration um, happened seamlessly or if there are any missing elements and then we will implement the fixes um, as necessary um, on not on this converted site but on the new site so Janet, if you can go to the next slide please so um, that converted site, the auto converted site, will be the information in that will be used to create the new site. And this new site is the one that will be used when teaching starts in semester two. And this is the site that we will work on, that you will work on. Um, and so we will have that converted site as a reference but the, the actual changes will happen on this new site. Um, and you will work with your learning designer and ethic advisor allocated to your course to, um, to make any changes based on the questionnaire that you completed, which indicated um, any of your intentions about the redesign of the changes, um, it will the questionnaire also indicated some of the tools that you use frequently or not at all and we will then um work with what you indicated on the questionnaire and um, based on what migrated into your pride space site to um make all of the changes um on this new site and this will be inactive we will we can keep working on it until um, students are added to the course. Um, and then if you can go to the next um, slide, Janet. So on this new course site, we will be making all of the revisions and changes and updates. Um, the SOT team, the Audi and the EdTech advisor will transfer one module or unit or week from um, the converted site to the new site. And we will um, apply the new templates that we have on Pridespace, and we will um, apply any other fixes and changes that might be necessary. Um, and then we will have a meeting with you, the, the convener, and perhaps the administrator, if you would like to include them, um, and show you this is what the sample module or week or unit will look like. And we will also show you how it's used, exactly um, how to create the rest of the course um, modules or weeks. Um, and then, yeah, so then it will be handed over to you to continue. Um, I quickly want to show you, uh, this is what a, a pre-populated template looks like on Pride Space. So, um, uh, no, this is not the template, this is the course, um, the course orientation. So all of the new sites will include a course orientation module, which includes um, information about getting started. Um, the course team information can be added here. The course outline can be added here. So this will be pre-populated that and um, can be edited and adjusted according to your course details. And then, on the, the next um, screenshot, this is an example of the templates that are available on Pridespace that you can pop into your course units. Um, it has a UCT look and feel, and it has um, pre-populated information, but that you can then edit according to your, your course content and information. Um, and the next slide, Janet. Thank you. So this is what um, your course homepage will look like, something similar. And then you can then customize it to add your own banner. So 
that picture with the writing hand that can be changed according to a picture that you like and you can also change the um the module um what are those the frames um and their pictures can also be customized for your own course look and feel um the home page will include messages and um other um important information that you will be adding to your course site. Um, and then, so the next um, slide includes information about the support that we um, will be offering throughout this revisions process. So after we uh, met with you to talk about the sample module or week um, that we have created, um, and how to continue doing building that onto your site using the reference site um, and adding the, the um, content to the new site, we can either, we can provide one of these options for support, but the recommended one is to um, provide hands-on help. So we will have the, the initial meeting with you and then you continue building and then we can have weekly or however frequent is necessary um, check in or sprint meetings with you to um, help with the build, help with the provisions, etc. Um, and then the second option is completely DIY. So your course team continues doing the, the provisions um, and then sort will be available as well as always. Um, and we also so on, on an ad hoc basis. Um, um, that will be that will be available for, in the, for the DIY option. And then for the third option, if you don't have any time or capacity at all, then the sort team um, can um, recreate the site and make all of the provisions on your course on your new course site and then hand it over to you three weeks prior to semester two or to the launch of the site. Um, but um, just to note for that third option, all of the assessments, um, the settings and grading, um, et cetera, will still need to be done by the course team. So the publishing of those items, um, similar to Vula, that will, and checking those settings will need to be done by the course team still. And because those are high stakes elements um, that SILT cannot take responsibility for. Um, okay, and then next up, Janet. So the um, so after the provisions have been applied, and before the start of semester two, SILT um, will be available to review the site according to three areas. So we have a quality rubric. Um, and this rubric um, highlights areas such as um, course orientation, student support, engagement, assessments, and accessibility. Um, so we will review the site according to those areas and then provide um, a, a document to indicate how the review went according to those items. And then the SORT team will, will also test your course from a student account. So it will be a user testing exercise and it will be done both on desktop and mobile to check what the user experience or the student experience is on your site. Um, and then also offer any feedback that comes from that testing. And then we will also have a final checklist with any technical um, items that may need to be checked and any to final to do's before the start of the semester. Um, so that is the process in more detail. Um, we will be co communicating with you throughout. It. Um, so don't worry if this seems a bit much or confusing at the moment. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to chat about it. If it's not, if it's not being sorted in the text chat. Okay, if there's nothing to handle, 
at this moment, uh, then I can hand back over to you, Janet. Sorry, I just lost my, my buttons for a while there. Apologies for that. So <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I was like, where have they gone? Thanks very much, um, Lauren, for that. Um, I think there have been quite a lot of uh, questions in the chat. So I um, yeah, I, I, will, I think my colleagues are, are going to respond to those. So I just wanted to see where we got to. So we, we she's, I think Lauren's given you a good outline of how the process will work. We do, I know people have been talking a lot about the time issues, but we really, really recommend that you um, go for that first option that we suggested because it'll just give you confidence to operate your course site if you actually doing a lot of the, you know, setting up of the things and doing the transfers, it'll just mean that you're a lot better off when you start teaching. Um, so we, while we can offer sort of more help, if you're really stuck for time, we really, really recommend you do as much as you're able to with our help. Um, and uh, as I said, we, we're not expecting it to take that much time, but it is an estimate at this time. So we are looking forward to getting your feedback about that. So the purpose of the pilots, as you know, is to get an, a sense of, um, how this process can will work and does work and to make it as best as it can be. So we are relying on your feedback and um, and please do talk to us about how things are going and what should be different. So we're delighted to have your enthusiastic support for this. And we, we, we've, we're very happy to have um, participants from across all the faculty so that people are trying out various tools and um, aspects of the platform that may be used differently across the faculties. And you know, we also want to identify if there are things that you know you felt you were doing, you were able to do on Vula, you can't do or not doing the same way. We'll work with you to find ways that you can do what you need to do. So that's the purpose of the pilot. As I said, there are 50 courses, four of which are we're calling shadow, which their courses are being built as a test but not being taught. Um, because a lot of them, those ones are particularly our first year courses, and we were more reluctant to, you know, uh, have uh, first year courses in the pilots. Um, I just wanted to remind you all that um, it is a work in progress. This is where we're at at the moment. So there will be continual improvements. Don't be surprised if things move around, colors change, the headings change. Just give us feedback if you really hate it, but expect changes. They already, they, they, there's also work continuing around the tool integration. We've got these tools already integrated, Turnitin, Zoom, Padlet, Gradescope, and there's still work being done on the rest of the tool integration, including Leganto, Opencast, and MS Teams coming very soon. Some tools don't convert absolutely seamlessly. I mean, the migration, auto migration is pretty good. We're pretty pleased with it. Um, but there are some where if you've got very, very complex, long lessons, um, then sometimes that might need a little bit of tweaking and fiddling, but we'll talk about it when you, when you meet with your LD and look at the conversion on your particular course. Okay, so just to roughly, this is a rough timeline. I know not everybody will keep to it, but we're suggesting we try and do the bulk of the work on the, uh, on the course transfers during June. So we've got time in July to do the testing and tweaking and fiddling. So I know some people have communicated they're not available in June. You need to just talk to your LD and discuss a, a time frame that doesn't end up being making a, a very sort of pressured and you know, stressful time just before semester starts. And then um, that's that's sort of from from the actual description of the process part of this. Um, I wanted to hand over to my colleague Tabisa to talk you through what tra training and uh, is available going to be available to the pilot conveners and the um, and the administrators. So um, if you if then this is a question here, um, if someone would like to ask a question at this point, I'm going to hand over to Tabisa. Bruce, um, sorry that you haven't received an email. Can we'll have a look and see if we did send it and who's who you've been allocated to your course. So thank you for letting us know. Um, we'll check follow that up. Anybody else in the room who hasn't received an, a personal email from an LD saying hi, I'm your LD, please let us know so we can follow that up. Okay, uh, Adam, you don't think you have either. All right, we'll check that as well. Thanks for letting us know. Um, any, please, please keep saying that we like to, or you, Julia. Okay, uh, Kath Rob, who's in the room, will um, is our uh, kind of uh, very fantastic project manager. We'll check on who was assigned to your courses and what's happened there. Okay, so I'm going to hand over to to Bisa um, 
I'm going to stop sharing to Bisa and hand over to you. Is that okay? Yes, thanks, Janet. Thank you. Thank you. So for the um, community development and training, we are sort of uh, working with um, everyone, conveners of the courses, uh, admin staff, tutors, guest lecturers, and students. And uh, so we will be having the formal training for the lecturers, and we also have orientation for students. So um, looking at these different types of training that we would be offering, that's uh, the intensive program, which uh, I think was also mentioned uh, in the last discussion. So it's a three hour slot over two days. And that's mainly focusing on the bright space skills and uh, course redesign. And then we also have got the standalone webinars where um, the main focus is on uh, how now you could be redesigning your course and uh, working with um, some tools. And then there's also consultations. So the one-on-one -on -one consultations where people are able to make a booking. And then along the line, we'll have the design studio, which will be running on Brightspace and taking people through the process of designing and redesigning their courses. So as uh, most of you may be aware that there has been that design studio for Vola. So for this time, we'll be having a bright space one. And then of course, there will also be some DIY resources. So as um, Lauren had mentioned, you could be uh, doing that process on your own. And so we also have got some resources to support with that and also some learning resources that of course we'll be making available through our SILT page. And so just a clear breakdown of this and some timelines. So for the standalone webinars, which are available in different formats. So we've got the webinar starting on the 6th of June, which is uh, next week. And then we'll be having our training for the tutors as well as this uh, orientation for the students who are participating in these courses that will be taking place in July uh, once they have um, returned. And then we've got the consultations that will be ongoing um, and that's best suited for conveners and administrators, but uh, we could also have consultations with uh, guest lecturers or anyone you've sort of invited to come and work with you in a course. And then the intensives, uh, we've got a plan for three groups. So one group would be uh, signing up for the 8th and 9th, the second group, the 14th and 15th, and the third group, the 21st and 22nd of June. And then as we mentioned, the uh, design studio, that will take place early uh, September, where we will be having one that's uh, coordinated. And then we'll also be having one where people can uh, dip in and work on their own. And so we'll have our resources available um, for the self pace uh, as from July. So uh, just a breakdown of these different options and uh, just for people to think about how this could work. So you could be um, working as a cohort, probably from your own faculty or your department, which I think is just really works well in the sense that you can share and sort of build that community uh, in your faculty. And so um, you could be, for instance, joining in that uh, intensive program. You could be joining as a group. And so it's much easier to work together. And these are the topics that we'll be having for the drop-in webinars, which are one hour slots. And the four that I've sort of um, utilized, they are going to be offered next week. Those are the ones starting from the 6th of June. 
And so we cover basically everything that's uh, helping people to redesign their courses on Brightspace. And then as we also mentioned, the, the design studio, which would be running over four weeks and that's approximately five hours of um, your time. And for the intensives, we've got these two options that we talked about, sort of the two days that we talked about. So this is just an idea of what will be covered. So that's, uh, we'll be having a morning session and an afternoon, sorry, a morning session and an afternoon session on each day. So as you see, they will be covering um, overview and navigation of uh, Brightspace how to manage your course infrastructure. We'll be having uh, how to design student activities using different tools, engagement and communication. And then on the next day, that's day two, it will be building content. Uh, it will be also, so for that whole uh, morning session, and then in the afternoon, it will be a sprint session in your sandbox. And as we also talked about the self-paced ones, so that's the resources that you could be able to make use of there, the DIY, and then uh, you could have your drop-in session and your consultations, which is for basically everyone. Because in those previous ones, uh, mainly that one, that's for conveners and TAs. And that brings us to the end. I just check there. Uh, thanks, Abhi. There's a question from Julia about all the intensives. Is it 1.5 hour each morning and each afternoon? How will it work exactly? Yes. So that's uh, one and a half hour in the morning. And then we've got uh, another half an hour for people who would like to remain and have some discussions. Uh, and then again, we've got the afternoon. Okay, and I think there'll be recordings if people aren't able to make, or how would it work, Tabisa? Yes, every session would be recorded. But yes, great. Um, and the booking, how does the booking work? The book getting people to choose this, mm -hmm. select the sessions. So we'll be sending out, uh, we just thought, so we just have first the discussion here and then before the end of the day, we, you will be getting an email um, for signing up. Thanks, Karen, for the question. Any other questions from people? So uh, we really recommend that you um, join, if you can, one of those, those double intensive sessions because it means that it will take you through you know the key stages of what um, of learning um, how to um, work with your Brightspace site, and um, I think how a lot of it will be uh, show and do as well. Is that right to be so, the style of it? Yes, uh, people will be working on their sandboxes. Great. So they will be doing. Okay. Um, do you want to, if people would like to um, unmute and ask questions, we've got time for questions now. That's really the information we wanted to uh, go through. We just wanted to be able to answer any questions and concerns you might have. Can you, uh, Jennifer's asking about how to book. You'll get an email, I think, to be said. Is that right, to be said? Yes, before system? the end of the, yes, sorry, Jennifer. <laughs> yes, before the end of the day, you'll receive an email uh, for requesting you to sign up. Great. Uh, got, I see Monique, you got your hand up, please speak, uh, go ahead. Hi, thanks, sorry. I just wanted a clarification. So uh, when you talk about the sandbox, is that the, the site that we, when the link, the original link that we got where there was an orientation, is that what you mean? And yeah, will, that, the, yeah. and will the new site allow migrated site just appear there. I'm not in sure, I'm not entirely sure how this all fits together. Yeah, so I think there isn't, I think if you, most of you would, would have signed up to be what we called at the time early yeah. access and you've got a site that you could have a look at and play around in. So that's the sandbox site that um, 
that Tabisa is referring to. And okay. then in terms of the new course site, your LD will make sure that you um, that you uh, get, you know, you'll, you'll get added to and see your, your own sites. So that'll be part of the process you, you have from your, with your LD, with your learning designer. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, okay, Megan, were you part of the early access um, early access group, which was about, I think in about April, May, we gave people a, a chance to have a look at Brightspace. Oh, okay, no, I wasn't part of that group. Okay, so okay. we'll we'll just chat, I think we'll just chat to Tabisa and decide whether they're going to use that, whether you need to have your own sandbox site or you can use your new course site. So we will, we'll check that, okay. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, I just had one other question. So I'm, um, we've agreed that, um, the, the site for second semester is actually just a shadow site on Brightspace and they'll right. only start with an actual site first semester next year. Mm -hmm. um, therefore, I mean, that it's not like our Vula site is going to be disabled. No. Okay, so we can just kind of straddle between the two. Yeah, I think it was a special request that, you know, people really wanted to just have time to to get that course ready. So it's, it, that sets yes. the shadow. It won't have students on it. So you need to basically carry on working with your Vula site as your main site, because that's where you're going to have your students on on yes. for next year. Yes. I mean, for this semester, for next semester, I mean, just be aware yes. of the fact if you are making changes to your Vula site while you're teaching in it, that you'll have to go back and make those changes to the shadow site before it right. gets used. Okay. okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, okay, I see some other hands up. Uh, who's got their hand up? I'm just looking to see who it's, it is. Um, uh, Kathy. That's it. Uh, thanks, <laughs> well, well, I wonder, do I jump in and identify or do I just wait? Um, I, I see that the administrators are down to get some training too. <clears throat> I haven't um, expressly asked my administrator to join. <laughs> Excuse me, but I think she's going to be very important because, for example, she administers remote exams and tests. <coughs> she generally puts me onto the new ruler site that she sets up for the class. She has a major role to play. Um, what has been done to draw them in so far? It hasn't been, we haven't started the training yet, so they haven't yet because this is you'll be going to the first training. As, you know, as yeah. until now we've been doing sort of more info sessions and no, talk, sure, talking but... in the back room to to the faculty leadership and so on. So no, nobody's missed anything yet, Kathy. So no, no, can... I know that. I'm just wonder whether they know it's coming. Oh, okay. Saying. No, I guess it because would be I know useful that if they're you... a little bit over overwhelmed and they need to plan ahead. That's okay. So I'm, yeah, I'm hoping that um, maybe the course conveners who who do need to work with a um, uh, course with the, with the admin people should sort of maybe perhaps just be giving them the heads up so that when they get mm -hmm. invitation, they're not like, what is this and so on. So, uh, you know, it does depend on each um, uh, department how much the administrators are involved. So that's why we haven't communicated with everybody. So is it something you could follow up, Kathy? Uh, yes, certainly. I can okay, speak to great. I just, I just wondered what her current kind of knowledge packet was, but I can get hold of her. And in fact, I should actually speak to the two administrators in our department. And, and my the course that I'm migrating early involves the one, but by next year, the other one's going to have to know all yeah. the, the information as well. So I'll speak to both of them. Yeah, so that's an important point. We, when we asked, um, there seemed to be quite different um, some departments had a, a kind of big role for their administration to start and others didn't. So, um, okay, uh, jumping the gun, who's this question? Richard, um, about external examiners. I'm gonna ask Sam if she can answer this question. We have been, been talking about it. Sam, are you in the room? I'm sorry, my computer was doing some weird glitch thing. <laughs> um, so, there hasn't been a specific decision about external examiners. So I think we'll probably have to reloop that back at closer to the end of the course. Um, so 
what's come up in Vula, just for some context for others, is that uh, there have been questions about um, some external examiners they want to give different levels of access, and that was being discussed as a separate role. I, I believe it also depends on how differentiated the access would be between um, different roles if we want to set up a specific one. I know that in Vula we have been using, um, generally they have been using existing roles, and there's some specific courses that we've been setting up custom roles for them. I don't know if that helps. <laughs> Richard, do you want to add to that or um, um, respond? Um, not, yeah, I don't have anything specific to add. It would just be um, a nice to have. Um, I have been giving external examiners access to Vula, so they're accustomed to it. They're accustomed to the rubrics in Vula. Um, so, yeah, um, if I'm going to be using Brightspace, then it would be nice for them to have, to have something as seamless as possible. But if it's not possible, then I can always go back to the old to the old standard. If there's some way of exporting rubrics, which is the reason why I'm giving external examiners access in the first place to Gula, because the rubrics can't be exported. OK, thanks. That's good to know, Richard. Thanks, Richard. Any other questions that we can um, answer right now? And there will be many opportun other opportunities talking to, as I said, learn designers and the rest of the team. But for now, anything else you wanted to clarify or need to know? Okay, I'm not hearing any other questions. Uh, and people need to run off to exams. <laughs> okay, Grant, that sounds a pretty important thing to do for. Good luck with that. Um, so we'll follow up the people who've said they haven't been contacted yet, because as, as far as we thought, most people are um, should have been contacted. Everyone should have been. So we'll definitely get back to you about that. Maybe you could also just check your junk mail folders in case it went in there. And um, please, as I said, we're inviting you to give us as much communication as you can, suggestions you have for how we should be handling it differently, different information, confusing information. We're really relying on you as our pilot group to help us make this process uh, work really smoothly, especially for the rest of our colleagues who will be doing this a little bit later. So thanks again. We really, really do appreciate your time and um, your enthusiasm and willingness to work with us on this. So looking forward to it and we'll be in touch soon through some various communications and forums. Okay, thanks everybody. <laughs>